Hey, this is Vlad Gadget taking a look at the HTC Desire S. It's a 3.7 inch Android gingerbread device. Uh, it's the successor to the HTC Desire, another 3.7 inch Android device. Um, it's built with an aluminum unibody shell, which is actually this one piece of aluminum which goes all around the device. Um, so it makes it very sturdy, very hard. There's a couple of plastic bits here on the top. This one is a removable, this one is. There we go. So, this plastic cover acts as the antenna, hooks up with these connectors down here, and here you've got a little latch which opens up, lets the battery out, and the micro, micro SD card and the SIM card slot is under there as well. Uh, coming back to the front. Um, you, you basically got the standard HC Sense user interface on top of Android. Um, it works pretty well, pretty smoothly. You've got this overview of all your home screens here. There's a couple of new additions that they've made. First one is here where you have your notifications and um, your running applications over here. That's standard and normal, but over here on the side you have quick settings. Whoops quick settings menu which gives you all your radios, so Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, mobile hotspot, GPS, etc. which you can just toggle uh, right from here. So that's a neat little addition. Then you have this uh, gallery widget, I guess uh, we can call it, even though it takes up one, home, one whole home screen. Um, and this just gives you a chance to browse through your pictures without again entering the application. Uh, it's something that quite a few Android customizations are doing nowadays. Uh, this is another little change. Instead of the time and the weather, you now have uh, the time and your social feed. So you can have things from your Facebook or your Twitter uh, account, so long as you get those signed in. This is another addition. Um, it's also available in the Incredible S. It's the Kobo ebook reader. Uh, so you've got a set of uh, classic books on here. And again, HC has given it a dedicated widget. So here it is. Uh, one quite neat thing about this is as you change from portrait to landscape mode, you have a piece of text underlined so you, you don't lose your, your spot where you're reading, which is quite nice and neat. But generally speaking, it's just an ebook reader, you just uh, black text on, white, on a white background, there's nothing special about it. Uh, then you've got we just like this calculator here, um, and you can add more of your own. Uh, you can change the wallpaper, add widgets, app uh, links, etc. Um, HC has a bunch of these widgets. Uh, it's just the case that we no longer really need them or use them. It's things like Friendstream uh, right here. It's just not something that you really require. The Twitter application for Android is now good enough. Uh, Facebook has its own application, obviously. Um, so, as you can see, our home screens are pretty bare. We just don't use all of these widgets that HC has decided to bundle in. Um, one final change with um, the version of Sense on this device relative to the Incredible S is that the applications menu has been tweaked up a little bit. So, now you have your usual grid, but it moves around. Uh, as if uh, you're looking at pages. So it's no longer the, the full scrolling as before. Once you let go, it, it switches an entire page. So maybe that's a more organized way of doing it. We don't know, but uh, it's different. And one other thing we noticed is you have your most frequently used applications here. So maybe this uh, gives you a faster way to access obviously your most frequently used applications and your downloaded applications are also separated out. And of course you can also come back and um, sort them alphabetically or whichever one is newest or oldest etc. Okay so that's that's mostly it. Uh, otherwise it's just uh, pretty much a standard Android fare. It has a Qualcomm MSM 8255 Snapdragon inside, Adreno 205 graphics. Um, you should have a pretty decent idea of how those perform by now. Uh, we'll take a look at those with the Xperia Play, Xperia Arc, and the Incredible S. Uh, if, you, if you're wondering about performance, um, one final thing we'll do is we'll just compare this against the original Desire handset, which we've got here. 
take a look. Um, so they're very similar in terms of dimensions. Uh, the new Desire S is uh, quite a bit smaller. Well, not quite a bit, but it's shorter. Uh, it's a tiny bit thinner and a tiny bit narrower. I'll just bring it, there we go. For comparison's sake, let's say both of them have the jumbo screen on top. And we're going to throw in the incredible S here on the side. This is a 4 inch device. These are both 3.7 inches. Uh, and if we want to take a look at thickness. In terms of general use and day-to-day -day use, there isn't much of a difference that you can tell. The Desire S is actually um, the best one in terms of uh, how, it, how it fits in the hand and how it fits in the pocket. It's, well, it, in our opinion, is to do with the, the existence of this chin here, which makes it very nice uh, to handle. Uh, but also, one thing we notice is that it's very easy to reach both the bottom right corner and the top left and the top right and the bottom left obviously as well but it's, um, there isn't any area of the phone which is actually hard to reach or to operate whereas perhaps with the original Desire uh, if, you, if you want to reach the top you're fine but then you kind of have to readjust the phone itself in order to get down here to find the search button and then readjust the phone itself again if you need to reach something up here such as the drop down menu so there you go that's uh, the original Desire right there the Desire S and the Incredible S.